outrage. It turns out we weren't told the entire truth about the banks. You probably, that, honestly, you're probably not even hugely surprised by that. We all remember the huge scramble last year at this time to get the tarp in place. They told us that they needed a bunch of taxpayer money to reestablish the market for all those illiquid assets that the banks had used to so generously lend to the American public. Uh, so then we gave them the money and they decided, ah, the heck with it, we'll keep the toxic assets and we'll just take the money. Uh, apparently all that haste, uh, and, or in all that haste, I should say, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke and then Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson forgot actually to tell us how bad it really was, although a lot of folks, in my, I will put myself in that group and a lot of other folks have, have been saying and continue to say, believe me, uh, if you look at what they've done with the banks, uh, we've got uh, all sorts of trouble. TARP Inspector General Neil Borowski actually is out saying in a new report that top officials were wrong when they said all nine banks getting the first round of cash were financially sound. I'm sorry I keep looking away from you here, but I'm trying not to blather on forever, which I would do if I was ad-libbing. So I'm reading from over here and I'm talking to this camera because it's kind of fun TV. Uh, besides hurting the government's credibility, though Borowski warns that the cost to taxpayers over time will be astronomical at least the, at risk some 24 trillion dollars we talk about this number a lot speaking of the banks the White House uh, is getting creative to try to curb compensation uh, I wish the White House would just get realistic and reestablish uh, capitalism anyway they've got a pay czar instead working on a plan to cut cash salaries for the big bosses uh, instead they'd be paid in stock a stock they couldn't get a hold of them for several years down the line uh, with that said, they're doing nothing about too big to fail, and as long as you can risk as much money as you want and pay yourself for all the upside and stick the downside with the taxpayer, uh, human nature will just leave them to screw uh, everybody in America for as long as it's legal to do so. Uh, if we're funding the bank bailout, ultimately, of course, you'd hope we get some transparency. That also not really the case. Uh, joining us now, Neil Borowski, the TARP Inspector General who released that report. Uh, and a couple of things strike me, uh, Neil, again, how we're funding the banks. The Federal Reserve has $8.2 trillion at risk by your calculation. Treasury Department, $6.8 trillion. Uh, again, this is borrowed money as we watch the dollar continue its precipitous decline versus other currencies. Again, we took the risk from the banks, stuck it with the taxpayer and the dollar. Uh, FDIC, $2.3 trillion. Uh, joint accounts, another trillion three. Uh, another $650 billion was just put in there. 91% well, of that money went to Wall Street, 9% of it went uh, to American citizens. Thus far, 11% has been paid back, and yes, uh, profits are at or near record levels at the few banks that still remain. Uh, this body of facts is almost, if it wasn't uh, true, it would uh, it'd be rather startling, Neil. Uh, walk us through the, the degree to which you feel like when the money was first uh, requested and delivered, that the American people or the American politicians were, were being told the truth. Well, I think that. There, there really is a concern about what happened. When, when the first $125 billion was, was pushed out to the nine largest banks, uh, the American people were told by Secret then Secretary Paulson in, in a press release, and I think in, in statements to the public, basically that these are nine healthy financial institutions. And then he linked that health to one of the goals of the program, basically stating that because they're healthy, uh, they'll be able to use this money to increase consumer lending. Because one of the, the big problems, of course, back a year ago, was the, the freezing of the credit markets, people couldn't get a loan. And the problem with that statement was it wasn't necessarily what Hank Paulson and what the Treasury and the Federal Reserve really believed. Uh, when we interviewed them uh, and, and talked to them about what was going on at the time, they had very serious concerns about the health of some sub of specific institutions. Uh, Secretary Paulson believed one institution was, was literally in, in danger of imminent failure. Uh, Chairman Bernanke had similar concerns about all of the financial institutions, absent government support, and concerns about specific institutions as well. Um, and the result is, of course, not only were there concerns about health that they didn't voice, but the banks weren't healthy, not all of them. We know that just from the simple fact that Bank of America and Citibank had to go back for additional funds. Uh, Merrill Lynch, of course, had devastating losses that quarter. And that had a real impact, as you just described and, and your statements in, in the introduction here. Uh, it hurt the credibility of the TARP program, of the Treasury, and of the government. Uh, and that's an important lesson we need to learn from when we look back yeah. at what happened last year. Here's my greatest concern going forward, and I'd be interested in your insight as to what can be done to accommodate for it. 
Because we have legalized what I call corporate communism, where corporations are able to take control of the government to prevent themselves from having to compete, whether it's using too big to fail or any trust exemptions in health insurance, they betray the most basic principle of American uh, competition and choice by controlling the government to behave as an effective communist, uh, meaning I don't have to compete with anybody because I control the government. As a result of that, you get a betrayal of adaptation, a development of capitalism ceases, you get misallocation of resources, all this capital ends up inside the bank, and then you get huge unemployment because you have such a misallocation of capital to the corporate communists and as a result there's no capital there for innovation adaptation and job creation in our economy which then leads everybody back to the taxpayer to try to get another trillion or two out of them how do you create jobs in America when you are funneling this amount of money into the into systems that are this broken and of this size uh, I think that you, you, you hit the nail right on the head with the, the concept of too big to fail. This, we, we've set up a system that was really, I think, um, exacerbated last year by the TARP program of too big to fail. Uh, it was sort of an implicit guarantee last year around this time. And with the TARP program and the statements that were made when the nine, big nine were, were, were given these capital injections, uh, the statement was basically that the government will not permit these institutions to fail. And that does create a heads I win tails the taxpayer picks up the bill and I think that is that is a your, your concern is dead on and without significant reform uh, we could be from that perspective in a worse place than we were last year I just want to look at how we're doing so far we all know the employment situation is bad and getting worse uh, GDP growth at this point is continuing to decline we may see a reversal in that personal income continues to go down and the one the one piece of good news I guess if you are one of the corporate communists anyway is that corporate profits are up uh, so five percent I guess the frustration for all of us who pay taxes is we're confused as to why it is we're driving uh, we, we wake up early stay late and work as hard as we do so that special interests can alter the rules of the game to take our money and and, and what can we do to help protect ourselves as you obviously uh, are there observing this uh, prevent this in the future and I think one of the things that fuels this anger and fuels this frustration, and in my view, very understandable anger and frustration, is the lack of transparency. Uh, the fact that here we are a year later and Treasury still refuses to require these financial institutions to tell us, the investors, the taxpayer, how they're using the TARP money. Um, the fact that we, we make a, a recommendation, as we did in this report, or a lesson learned in this report, in the future, be careful with your words and make sure that you're honest with the American people. Not saying, hey, this bank is failing or this bank is in trouble, but be honest about why you're doing something and what the purpose is here to, to support the system. Uh, and Treasury reacts by saying that, oh, well, the ends justify the means, everything worked out, and we shouldn't second guess those words. All these statements, well, all these actions fuel this, this anger and cynicism. Everything worked out for who? I guess for the fact that we haven't gone into a Great Depression, uh, the fact that we haven't had a systemic collapse. Uh, but the point is, without transparency, uh, you're going to have this continued anger and frustration. Now, it may be you'll still have the anger and frustration, but at least we won't yeah. have this sense that I, that I hear so often that the government is hiding the ball from the taxpayer, from the investor. Yeah. And I, I think that's a first step. It's not the final step, but I think it's a first step. You know, Neil, anything you can do to get us more information as to where all that money is and what they did with it would be greatly appreciated. We thank you for your efforts uh, up to this point. Well, thank you. I'll keep, I'll keep fighting. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Neil Borowski, uh, again, uh, working for the taxpayer to try to keep track of all that money at the banks, which, again, apparently they don't want to tell us where it is. Straight ahead on the morning meeting, uh, plugging in, uh, is the U.S. the most admired country on the earth?